scripture. First scripture would be Zechariah 4 and 6. Have it say amen. Four and six reads. He says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? For as Zerubbabel shall thou become a plain. He shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Rubabel have laid the foundation of this house, and his hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice. And shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Amen. Judges. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there return of the people twenty and two thousand. And there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee, and of whosoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that laughed of the water with his tongue, as a dog laughing, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that laughed put up their hand to the mouth were three hundred men. The rest of the men bowed down their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lap will I save thee and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go every man unto his place. This kind of gets you into the mind of God. Uh, what we like to use for a topic tonight is surviving humble beginnings. Everything that is big starts small. Everything that is big starts small. Who all want a big house? Six figure salary. Who wants that? Seven figures. A million dollars, right? There's nothing wrong with aspiration. You should always aspire to be great, aspire for the best. But one thing about it that you must realize that a start has to st it has to start from some place. There are a number of never believe started small. How many got Google on the phone? Small company. It's not small anymore. YouTube. My kids watch YouTube all the time. Walt Disney Company. 
Started small. Mattel started small. That truck to be driving down the street, what, what truck am I talking about? That truck to be driving, delivering packages. Amazon <laughs> started small. It starts with an idea. In the book, Zechariah, the Lord speaks and he encourages them and tell them who will despise the day of small beginnings. Backdrops to the story, the old temple that was built by who? Who built the old temple? Bob Stop. Old temple. You know it? Solomon. David desired to build it. The prophet told him to go ahead and do it. The prophets can be off too. <laughs> he said, yeah, go ahead and do it. The all is in thy hand. And the Lord spoke to him and said, no. Go back and tell him he can't build it. His hand's too bloody. He shed too much blood. So, David goes and he tells Solomon. And to show that David is not bitter, I'm sure he was a little crestfallen because if you knew David, David had a heart for God. He, David, he's a sweet psalmist of Israel, as we say. And David, David says, he sits and he looks and he's like, how dwell me in houses of curtains and, and uh, a sealed, roof is, sealed roofs and the house, the Ark of the Covenant is in a curtain. David was looking big, but that was big in the natural. That's what he wanted. But Solomon goes and he constructs this magnificent temple. And it's one of the seven wonders of the world. You know, we, if you look in the encyclopedia, you can see some of the pictures of the ruins. And they, they have, if you read it, they got stuff inlaid with gold and emeralds. It, it, I could just imagine how majestic that it was. And it was great. But that temple was destroyed. It was destroyed because the people forsook God. And God said, if you don't abide by my word, this place will become a byword. Well, people will walk past and wag their head saying, this has happened to the people that didn't obey God. So the temple is destroyed. Now Zerubbabel, Israel, Nehemiah, returning from captivity. They're coming out of Babylon. And they want to do the will of God. But they got seemingly big Footsteps to follow. How can you follow something so great? So magnificent. David went and got the cedars from Lebanon. And go, if you, the, the chapter illustrates all that he poured in it to get all the resources. The diamond, the topaz, all the precious stone. This was all in it. Gold. Gold. Gold all over the place. But... Look at your neighbor and say, you got to start somewhere. It all starts with a start. You start, you can have an idea. Every one of those companies, Amazon, Mattel, Walt Disney, started with an idea. But you got to do what? Put it in motion. You got to Put it in motion. How many of us got these ideas in our head? Huh? Got their own business in the head, what to do? Gotta, gotta put it in motion, baby. Gotta put it in motion. So, but one thing that you must have is the presence of God. There are too many obstacles coming against you 
that you got to have something to sustain you. Especially anything that is of God that you try to push and to do, the enemy is there to fight you tooth and nail. But look at your neighbor and say, God rose with all power. And in your darkest hour, when you're ready to give up, God say, I'm with you. I gave you this idea. See it to through completion. So, people talk, right? All the time. One thing you must do about an idea, anything that's when it's small, it must be protected. We're living in an age and generation where people talk all the time. They put all their business on Facebook. They put their business idea on Facebook. And they wonder why somebody stole their business. You gave it to them. You got to protect it in its infamy stage. A good mother don't let her baby get passed around throughout the church. No, you can't hold my baby. No. Thank you. And if you leave them with somebody, hey, don't be passing my baby. It got to be protected. Because they are vulnerable. Nehemiah, when he went to build a wall, he left the king. If you follow in the scripture, he said of his plans, he told no one. But I understand we live in an age that everybody wants to over communicate. You got TikTok, Facebook, what, Twitter? What's the other one? I'm sure it's some more out of Snapchat, uh, Instagram. <laughs> Who? MySpace. See what I'm saying? And one of the things I don't understand, how, why, why would you tell everybody you, you on vacation? I'm in the Bahamas. Your place is exposed. Everybody on Facebook. Oh. You don't believe people wake up in the morning and they figure out how to pray on others. Learn how to protect stuff. But with the presence of God, that brings a fortitude. And in the sixth verse, so he said unto me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord Almighty. Who art thou, O mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to the shouts, God bless it, God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also complete it. Successful people See the ending of a thing when they put it in motion. You don't put it in motion and try to, I'm going to finish this. No. Think it out. Know every step. Calculate it. But when God is with you, he will encourage you when others discourage you. Others will discourage you because of jealousy. When you moving, they were lazy. They should have been moving. And because you're doing something, you make them look bad because they're not doing nothing. So instead of encouraging you, they will discourage you. But you got to have the mental fortitude to say, I'm going to be successful. Now, the 10th verse says, Who despises the day of small things? Men will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. A plumb line is a measure, how you measure things straight. Now, when the Lord tell you, 
Who shall despise the day of small things? He know what Zerubbabel is coming against. Now, if you follow in another scripture, I think it's in Ezra, how when they built the foundation, some of the elders, some of the, the other older ones that seen the glory of the older temple, They cried. Can you imagine? You're doing all you can. The, the young people were happy. They were excited. The other one, whoo, you know. They wept. You must be able to fight comparisons. One tactic that an enemy would like to use against you is to compare you to somebody else. I am not you. I am my own mold, baby. That shit, hold on. Hey, God. When God made me, he, 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 he made a new mold. I might have some similarities, but don't compare me to you. You let comparisons to other people try to, and it thwarts your own progress because you comparing your circumstance to their circumstance. But I come to tell you, the circumstances is much different. You looking at the old temple. It looked good on the outside. It looked great. But baby, I don't operate in the same parameters that you have. Now, when you're able to fight the comparisons, people are going to talk about you. But I'm reminded of the scriptures that said the latter the glory of the latter house <laughs> God, shall be greater than the, than the glory of the former house. Because the former house was built off the flesh. And what he said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. You're going to make it by the spirit of God, baby, but not by your flesh. Your business is going to succeed because you put God in it. The most successful business are the businesses that put God in. Why does Chick-fil-A make more money than any other restaurant? Huh? They sure God. <laughs> That's a principle in that. You work in seven days, I work six, and I make more. Somebody better catch that. It's a principle. It ain't a heaven or a hell thing. It's a principle. I want to be successful. I know as, as the pastor said, I'll never be broke another day in my life. I learned the secret. It's a principle, baby. Put God first as a principle. They wept. And they wanted to compare them. That comparison thing. Just as Apostle Carr taught, once comparisons get in your mind, you will start talking like somebody else. You'll start dressing like somebody else. You, you you want to drive what they drive? You are not nobody else. You are not your father. You are not your mother. Y'all got the same genes, but you, you are not the same. You will go higher than your father. You will go higher than your mother. See, the older people... Wanted them to be on the level of their forefathers. But see, God was doing something big. Little, big. It looked little, but it's big. See, because God was building a, a, a spiritual house. This natural house is going to be destroyed. 
huh? But he was going to make that body the temple. He was building a new thing. So when you start to try to compare yourself to the old thing, you will miss God. You got to have the mental fortitude to press ahead. Say, I, I refuse to quit. Now, let me ask you a little bit. Human society, we think numbers mean everything, don't we? In jobs, they run the numbers, they run the statistics. How many people we're doing it? How many, you know? There's Sometimes we, we get a sense of safety in numbers, don't we? If we embark on a journey and we have 50 people, man, I, I thank God for the 50, but I feel better if I had 100, you know? You know, where is so-and-so at? We, I, something about numbers make you feel better, make you feel secure. But... Can I bust your bubble? God don't think like that. Huh? Numbers is a, is, a, is a flesh thing. We, he said what? Not by might. Nor by power. But by my spirit. Your might equals numbers. Because it's the strength of my numbers that's going to get it done. But it's the spirit it's going to complete the thing. Two fish, five loaves of bread, and he fed what? 5,000? The spirit. To feed 5,000 naturally, you need what? Hundreds of fish. See, when you get that with God, but you are unstoppable. Because all you need is a word from the Lord. You get a word, you say, baby, I can do it. And so what if some don't believe it? Baby, God is still able. You wonder why you still got Because the Lord gave me a word. And as long as there's a word over my head, I got to live. Because God's word will not come back for me. They, they taught me when, when the preacher preached, pull on God. Let him release. Lord, speak to me. Speak to my situation. Because if you speak to my situation, all I got to do is believe. And it'll pull me up out of the dump. That is the power of the word of God. Speak to me, Lord. Shall I know. As long as you speak, you will live. Because the word of God said, my words are spirit and they are life. I got to I see why the saints rejoice so much at the word. He wants to call jumping all over the church. Over a word, over a word. He gave me a word. He spoke to me. Do it. Do it. The devil don't want you to get no word from the Lord. He wants you to speak to a thousand. Word about what God is going to do. But if God gave you a word, everything big must first start small. He said that you're going to have this. And we let the course of the thing discourage us. But all you got to do is hold on, baby. Let's go to Judges 6. The numbers thing. God will mess with you. Six, I'm sorry, seven, six, and look, seven, four. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Let's go back to the second verse. The Lord said to Gideon, seven and two, you have too many men for me to deliver the meeting into your hands. In order that Israel may not boast against me that their own strength has saved her. That's what the numbers will do. Numbers will make you boast in your own strength. 
It was my salary. It's because I worked hard. Do you know how long I've been in school, baby? I got the MD behind my name. I studied hard for this. You getting the glory. Behind me, I'd rather be little in the sight of God to become big. Hey, God, hey, ain't nothing to me. It's all God, baby. I give it all to him. Gideon gathered an army. The story of Gideon. Gideon is a judge, and Gideon is hiding. The Midianites were tormenting the children of Israel. Every time the harvest would come, they would, just like a, a, a old seed eater, he's sitting back there waiting. Yeah, they got the corn almost ready. Let's, let's wait one more, one more week. You got your mind fixed, all what you're going to make with that corn and how you're going to eat good. And, and just before you get out, they come and they clean it. That's what they did. Tormented them. And Gideon is somewhere hiding. Hiding on the, wine, the floor of the wine press. But how many know that God, he don't see you as you are? Huh? He see the complete God. He see the complete man. Oh, Woo, God. You, you polluted in your own blood, but he, he see the complete man. Get in hiding. He said, hell, thou mighty man of the Lord. What? see the complete man. I, I see the Gideon that's going to deliver the Midianites. See, 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 when you know God, ain't that, that's why you're not a, see, the devil wants you to make you think that because you all caught up in this that you don't need to come into the presence of God, but you need to get into the presence of God, baby, because God see the complete man. He don't see the man that's all in the blood. He see who you can be. He see past your failures. God know I'm a failure. He know I messed up. You might not know, but God know. But God see the complete Michael. He see the Michael that got the victory. But all Michael got to do is hold on to the word of God. Just don't you quit. Don't you give up. Everything big must first start small. I'm comfortable being small. Because I ain't going to stay small long. Oh, and the sky is the limit. All you need is persistence and press forward with the will of God. Getting you have too many. What? I got too many. God don't need numbers. But God create numbers. Did you get that? He, he, he don't need numbers. But the movement create numbers. Jesus and 12 disciples flipped the world upside down. He didn't need the numbers because it started with Jesus. God. But he flipped the world up all upside down. And the, and, the, and, the, and the gospel spread through the uttermost parts of the world. 12 became thousands, millions. It ain't the numbers. But the movement create numbers. It draws. So can you imagine what's going through Gideon's mind when he says it's too many? He said, announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 20,000 men left while 10,000 remain. Surely 10,000 is enough. When you think? It'd be enough. The Lord said to get in there are still too many. One thing the Lord just gave me. See, you don't understand that the, the pressure that's on leadership. Because leadership has to follow what God say. They want to be successful. And what God does, he'll put you in a position that's confusing to the people. Because the people are looking naturally. Get it, what, what, can you imagine? You're a soldier. We're going to fight. And, and they're going, hey, 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 y'all come back here. Hey, 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 I might get killed. Come back here. Lead 
leadership cannot be swayed by people. Yeah. Leader, sometimes you got to grit your face like iron and say the word of God and, and move on. <laughs> I heard Pastor Scott say, sometimes you got to take his glasses off. I can't see you. I see the image of you, but I can't see whether you're frowning at me or not. Lord said, let him go. And you said, what? He said, what? Oh, let him go. Huh? And the people was, go get him. You got to follow God. He had to stay the course. Even though we're small, we're going to Get big. We're going to accomplish. We're going to accomplish it where God gets the glory. Because you know good and well, if you accomplish it out of your strength, you will get the glory. This flesh likes to be praised. Huh? It loves it. It loves it. It loves it. Huh? Yeah, I was able to put 50,000 down. You boasting on the 50,000 you put down. That's what you, you, you're saying. You subtly. Yeah. Uh, do, did you hear that? I put 50,000 down. Yeah. Yeah. I got it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's the flesh. But how can you say when God say, you don't need nothing down? What? God get all the glory. Give you a word if you hold to it, it will blossom. Just because you start small, don't mean you should remain small. As long as you eat, drink, them boys don't look nothing like how they did when they came from the hospital. My two sons. Be consistent. See, the thing is, we are not consistent. We in a generation that like to start and we stop. I'm on fire for one month. Be consistent. Three, you got to have the patience to allow God to work on your behalf. While you're working on you, God is working on the situation. God calls the children of Israel to take the long way around. Because he said, the iniquity of the Amorites are not yet full. Which means that he was allowing them to sin a little bit more because I'm going to wipe them out. And that thing that you were going to try to labor for, I'm going to get it. Huh? Who gets the glory out of that? God. Huh? You can glory in your 50,000, but he gave it. He gave it to you. Oh, God. God bless you for giving 50,000, but he gave it to me. Because he get, it starts with a word. You hold to the word. And when God speaks to a man, he can speak to you at your lowest point. But that word has the ability to bring you up out of the dump. And when that word comes, you are not so much enthralled with numbers. This is why Jesus was able to tell the disciples because he was on a mission. See, sometimes we are too easily swayed. People sway us off of what God has put us in charge to do. Jesus, when he told them to eat his flesh and to drink his blood, if you follow in the scriptures, 
Many of the disciples turned and walked away and didn't follow him no more. What did Jesus say? Did he cry? He looked at the 12. Will you also go? I got a word from the Lord. You got to be on a mission. I am determined to succeed at life. God did not raise me up to be a failure. I am somebody's hope. I am somebody's dream. Brian Courtney Wilson has a song. Uh, what's that song? Um, and it says that, some of the verse says that you are somebody's dream. The dream didn't start with you. Somebody, your mother, your mother's mother, and your father's father, they had a hope that one day out of their seed that somebody will come for. You got to realize there's a lot riding on me, baby. I got my mother prayers on my, on my shoulders. I got my great-grandmama prayers on my shoulders. I got my bishop prayers on my shoulders. I got to succeed in life. Couldn't ain't option. When you got that mindset, quitting ain't an option. It's just a matter of time. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a matter of time. In due time, you will become the man or woman of God that God calls you to be. Even though you may start small, Titus says, survive in humble beginnings. Survive, survive the, 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 the naysayers, survive the doubters. And sometimes we can be naive to people that, because we as saints, we are taught to love everybody. But when I love you and you hate me because you see purpose in me, but you got to realize, even though you hate me, I'm going to still love you because I got a purpose-driven life, baby. I'm going to reach my purpose. I'm going to be encouraged. I come to encourage you. No matter where you are, God gave you a word. See it through to completion. Don't let the little troubles around you discourage you. But believe God. Have hope in God. God can bring you up from obscurity to the platform. Anything you do for God, there's a reward. You got to have the patience to see it through. <coughs> in closing, being in physical fitness, one of the biggest mistakes people make is not being consistent. There's no discipline. They, why is it the first of the year every gym is packed? <laughs> every packed you. Those, those the, the, the ones that the avid exercisers, you know, that constantly go to the gym, I come to the gym 6 o'clock. I can't find a parking space. What in the world? Get up there on the treadmill and everybody got the bandana on and the iPods. In. Tying up all the machines. Ain't got no courtesy. The gym got to put in, they got to say, 20 minute limit, please. Cause they get on there tied up for a whole hour. You don't realize Rome won't build in one day, baby. Get con be consistent. Take your time. But I learned. Okay. Well, maybe I need to stop going to the gym five days a week and go two days a week. Give me one month and then watch what happens. Just as sure within a month 
you can get any parking spot you want. Because <laughs> they're not consistent. It's consistent. If you exercise 10 minutes, be consistent about it and you'll see results. Be diligent about your business, you'll see results. Be diligent on the thing that God put in your possession, you'll see results. Over time. If you're trying to be disciplined in prayer, pray for two minutes. Pray for three minutes. But be consistent with it. I think that's what Blue teaches. He said be consistent. If you're consistent, you'll see results. If you're consistent, like them boys, they consistently eat. <laughs> you got to worry about that. They eat. <laughs> they eat. They eat consistently. So they grow. <laughs> they grow. New shoes, new pants. New shirts, they grow. If you're consistent, you will grow. Consistent in Bible study, you'll grow. Consistent in reading, you'll grow. See, the devil wants you to get it all done in one day. Yes, it don't happen that way. That's how you get burnt out. That's, that's why them, them people that spend all that money on the gym membership get burnt out. Because they tried to exercise for two and three hours. And then next week they can't walk. <laughs> Nobody told me it was going to hurt like this. Uh, <laughs> you should have asked somebody. <laughs> Be consistent. And you will not remain in the small state. Be consistent. Don't, don't let nobody compare you to somebody else. You're your own person. You're unique in the eyesight of God. And every word that God give you, if you hold to it, God will bring it to pass. He'll bring it to pass. Let's give God a praise in the house today. And truly, thank you for this chance and this space and this opportunity. Right now, we get our deacon to come here, raise this offering. Surviving humble beginnings. Everything that is big must first start small. It ain't all in the numbers, baby. Not in the beginning. But it will generate.